This event of an architecture thing is easy. I just go through my code base, publishing events wherever I want. This is so easy. Let's just go and publish events everywhere. When I create an order, when an order is ready for delivery, we'll publish another one. I write the state, I publish the event. I write the state, I publish the event. What could possibly go wrong? Where are my damn events? The data's in the database, but the events just aren't being published. What is actually happening? Why are you making a call for an order that doesn't exist? Where the are you getting this information? Yes, I know you might have received an event for the order, but the order does not exist in the database. What are you thinking? Hi, I'm James Easton. Please don't be that guy. Although event driven architectures can feel really easy at the outset, there are actually so many things you need to think about as you build an event driven system. Not least, how you go about publishing events and managing state. And in this video, you're going to learn how you can manage state in a reliable way whilst also publishing events to downstream systems. And I'm going to show you how to do that in two different ways. One, the more traditional approach where you would write to two different tables in your database, wrap that in a transaction, but also using change data capture. Modern database technologies, things like Amazon DynamoDB support streaming changes out of your database as things happen, which makes it a really nice way to implement the outbox pattern without needing to duplicate data in your database. Now, before I show you some code, let's just understand exactly what the outbox pattern is. The naive implementation you saw of this at the start of this video is where a request comes into your application. And at this point, you write the state to your database and you publish an event to your message bus. And you do those two things sequentially inside your application code. This can cause really, really difficult problems. Now, the slightly easier of the two problems that could happen here is if the data writes to your database successfully, but the message fails to publish to the message bus. In this situation, at least your state is written to your database. Your downstream systems might be a little bit unhappy because they never receive an event, but at least you've got the state you've recorded the request. The second and much more problematic thing that can go wrong here is that the state fails to write to your database, but the events get published successfully. In this scenario, your downstream system thinks they're happy. They think they're happy because they receive events. Great. But if this downstream system then makes a callback, it says, hey, I need some more information about the data inside this event, your application is going to go and look in the database, not actually find that information. Imagine this is an order. The application doesn't actually know this order exists, but the downstream system thinks the order does exist. This is a real problem because there's no real easy way here to reconstitute the state in your database at the point in which the event was published. This is the reason the outbox pattern is so important. And generally, if you are managing state and publishing events, you are almost always in every single possible scenario going to want to so use some kind of outbox to manage this situation, unless you have a really, 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 really well thought out and good decision not to do that. So what does the outbox actually look like then? Well, let's have a look at the two different ways you could do this. And in both scenarios, the request is going to come into your application layer and you're going to write some state to your database. Now, in the traditional implementation of the outbox pattern, when you write the data to your database, you're going to write to two separate database tables, two separate collections in your database. You're going to write to your actual main database table, the place you're storing your actual state. That might be the orders table, the payments table, the inventory table, whatever that might be. You're writing your state to the database. But you're also going to write any events you want to publish to a table that you might call outbox. So when that request comes in, you're gonna update your state and also write data to your outbox table. And you're gonna wrap both of them things inside a transaction. That means if one of them fails, they both fail, you return a request to your user saying things didn't work correctly. So now you're in a situation where you can guarantee the state has been written to your database and that you've got an event in your outbox table waiting to be published. At this point, you've then got a separate running application that's monitoring that outbox table and it's looking for events in the outbox that haven't yet been 
published. It's going to pick up them events and send them onto your message bus. Once an event has been successfully published onto a message bus, it is then going to mark that record in the database as sent, which means you can then move on and not process that event multiple times. Now, something to be really, really careful of here, and something I've fallen foul of in the past, is that if you don't clean up your outbox table, that table can grow completely unconstrained. I've been in a situation before, back in the days where you used to run SQL servers on Windows servers. One day, that server suddenly crashed and burned and everything stopped working. It was because the server had run out of disk space. It had run out of disk space because the database had taken up all of the disk space on the server. Why had the database grown so big? The outbox table wasn't being cleaned up. It will grow completely unconstrained. So you'll need to also make sure, as well as having a worker that's publishing the events, you'll also need to manage cleanup in some way, making sure eventually you're cleaning up events that have been published successfully. Now, you probably don't want to do that immediately. You don't want to immediately delete an event from the outbox as soon as it has been published, just on the off chance you need to republish an event or you need to see something that has happened. So typically, you'll have some kind of deletion date that'll be so many minutes, hours, days in the future, depending on exactly how resilient you need your system to be. So that is the traditional implementation of an outbox. Request comes in, write to your state, write to your outbox, publish the event in a separate process. But services like Amazon DynamoDB support streaming database changes. That means that whenever anything changes, gets updated or is deleted from your database, you can stream those changes out and do some work with that change data. This is incredibly useful for us as we build out our outbox pattern. So what might that look like? The request is still going to come into your application and you're still going to write the data to your database. This is a DynamoDB table. And in this situation though, all you're writing to your table is your state your updated order, your updated inventory item, your updated payment information, whatever it is, all you're doing is writing the state to the database. DynamoDB is then going to expose those changes through a stream, and you can hook something into that stream of data. In almost all cases, that is going to be a Lambda function. So now you've got this Lambda function that's receiving these changes, these creates, these updates, these deletes, and as it receives that data, it can then parse that updated, created, deleted item and use that to generate an event, publishing that event onto your event bus. This is a really powerful pattern. It saves you needing to clean up your outbox. It saves you needing to worry about publishing the same event multiple times. And it saves your database from growing completely unconstrained because all you're storing in your database is the actual state itself. Sounds kind of interesting. Let's go and see how you actually implement both of them things now. Okay, so the outbox pattern. What does that actually look like? Well, let's have a look at the order service inside plant-based pizza. As always, all the code for these samples is in the description below. You can go off and have a look at this. You can deploy this into your own Azure or your AWS account. And the actual order object inside the database, it has internally, there's this private list of integration events. What this means is that whenever anything happens with this order, that an event that needs to be published is stored in this collection inside the order. So for example, when the create method is called on an order to create a brand new order, after the order actually gets initialized, you'll notice that an order created event gets added to this events collection. Same again when an order gets confirmed, when the confirm method is called on the order, again, the event is added to the collection of events. So as your business logic is running, all you're doing is collecting up this in-memory collection of all the events to be published. Now, when you actually go and write the data to the database, this application happens to use MongoDB under the hood. This will broadly look the same whatever database technology that you're using. And you'll see when the add method is called, when I'm adding an order to my database, as well as actually making the call to the database, I'm going to insert the order into my orders collection in DynamoDB. I'm also going to iterate over this set of events, this collection of events in my order object, and insert another item to my MongoDB collection to the outbox table. And I'm storing this outbox item, which stores the event data, the type of the event, and the fact that this event has been processed 
process, which of course you want to initialize that to false. Now, a really quick thing to point out here, because I'm using MongoDB locally, or when I deploy this, it uses MongoDB Atlas on the free version that does not support transactions in MongoDB. So this big to-do here is saying this should absolutely be wrapped in a transaction. If you're doing this in the real world, wrap this in a transaction. It just so happens that the database technology I'm using doesn't support transactions, which means I can't actually do that. So big word of warning here, if you're looking at this code, this should be wrapped in a transaction. Fundamentally though, what you're doing is you're updating your state, you're storing data in the outbox. Then separately, there's this completely separate running application. This is running as a background worker inside .NET, and you've got this outbox worker class. You'll notice the outbox worker inherits from background service. This is this is a completely now this is now a completely separate running process that's only job is to read data from the outbox, publish the events. And you see the actual code for this is reasonably straightforward in that it's looking for all the items in the outbox table. Again, this is using MongoDB. This could be a SQL query to query a SQL database. And we're looking for outbox items that have been processed and have not failed. You'll see what that failed property does in just a moment. And then we're just gonna iterate over all of those outbox items, have a little switch statement to switch based on the type of event. Remember, there's gonna be lots of different types of events all stored in this data. Database. So we're going to switch based on the type of the event. If this is an order completed event, for example, we're going to DC realize that into the actual order completed event and then make the call to our event publisher to actually publish the event to the downstream system. What messaging technology this is using is largely irrelevant. All to be aware of is that you're reading the items from the outbox, you're iterating over them, checking the type of event, and then publishing the event to the downstream system. You'll notice after the fact, you also set the outbox item to be processed true. Now, this whole thing is also wrapped in a big old try catch. And if there are any kind of problems with this, you're also gonna mark the outbox item as failed. That also happens if there's an unknown event type, if an event type gets published that the worker doesn't know about. And you're also gonna set the failure reason in the database to be the exception message and the stack trace. This means if you're going to look in your database for all your failed to publish outbox items, you can see why exactly it failed to process. And then finally, you're going to update the item in your database. Here, this is updating the, the item in MongoDB with that new outbox item. And that new outbox item will either be set failed true, or it will be set to processed true. What that means is that when this query next, is, next runs again, one of these two conditions is not going to be met, which means that item won't then be picked up in the outbox again. Now, of course, there's, a, there's lots and lots of different ways to do this. You could do this in memory inside a single running application. I could start a background service inside my actual API that's receiving the request in the first place. Personally, I don't want my background workers to affect the performance of my API itself. Because if I start to receive a whole lot more load through my API, that means I'm gonna have a whole lot more load going into my outbox, which means this background worker running in the same running process as my API is going to start to take away resources from my actual API itself. So from a personal perspective, I always like to have this as a separate running process, a separate running thing. But of course, that is completely up to you. So remember, the fundamental things to be aware of, when you write the data to your database, however you might be doing that, update the state, write the events to the outbox table and wrap that whole thing in a transaction. Yes, I know I'm not doing this very well here. Then you've got a separate running thing that might be inside the same running application. It might be a completely separate running application. It doesn't really matter. You've got something else that's reading the outbox items that haven't yet been processed, publishing them to your event bus. Nice and simple. Now, of course, I said there's another way of doing this that's using DynamoDB streams. So let's just go and have a look exactly what that might look like. So there's another implementation of plant-based pizza in the GitHub repo that uses AWS instead of Azure. And in there, if you go and have a look at the account service, the account service shows you this in action. So all that's happens here, the actual user account object doesn't have that same idea of having a collection of events in memory because actually my user account doesn't really know anything about events. All my user account knows is about creating and validating dating users. When the user account is written to the database, if I look at my DynamoDB account repository here, that item is just created in the database. There's just a put item call to DynamoDB. All we're putting into Dynamo is the actual account itself. There's no outbox, there's nothing else. All I'm doing is just storing my account as I would as normal. Now, when you actually configure DynamoDB, and this project here uses the AWS CDK, 
doesn't really matter how you're doing this. When you create your DynamoDB table, you can turn on DynamoDB streams. Now there's a few different options when you turn on DynamoDB streams. It's just get the old image, which if you're creating something will be empty. If you're updating something, you'll only get the previous version. If you're deleting something, you'll only get the deleted version. There's the new image, which is the complete opposite. There's both the new and the old, and then there's only the keys. For this situation, because we actually care about the actual body, we actually the actual contents of the item that's been written, we're gonna use new and old images. And then you can also map up a Lambda function. So down at the bottom here, I'm creating a new Lambda function. This function is gonna be my outbox worker. And here you actually add an event source to your Lambda function. That event source is a DynamoDB event source and you pass in the DynamoDB table. So now you've got this DynamoDB table that's got DynamoDB streams enabled and that's, str and a and you've got a Lambda function that's hooked up to that DynamoDB stream. If we go and have, if you go and have a look at the actual Lambda application code now, so if you open up the Lambda project and go and have a look at the Outbox class, this is an example of actually processing a DynamoDB item. So you get your event into DynamoDB as a DynamoDB event. That event will have a list of records that you can then iterate over. At the very top level of these DynamoDB event records, you're going to have this event name property. Now you might get confused and think this is the actual name of an event. It's not. This is going to be set to either insert, modify, or remove. This tells you if the record you're receiving on the DynamoDB stream is where a data has been inserted, data has been updated, data has been deleted. So here, this is an insert. I'm going to handle this as an insert event. And it's here where I can actually then parse the user account information from that DynamoDB record. Once you've parsed that information, you've got your actual user account object. You can then go off and actually publish the event. So what's happening here? The record's coming into my API. It's been stored in DynamoDB. All I'm doing is putting the item to DynamoDB using a standard put item request. I've enabled DynamoDB streams and then hooked this Lambda function up to my DynamoDB stream. This Lambda function is going to run when a new change happens in the database, handle that as an insert event, and then I'm going to go off and publish my user created event. So that is a slightly different way of doing this. If you're using a database technology that supports streaming, that supports change data capture, this can be a really neat way of doing things without needing to worry about cleaning up your outbox, without needing to persist multiple things to your database, which is going to affect the size and the performance of your database. In this scenario, you're just writing state as normal and working with them streams off the back of that. So that's two different ways of implementing an outbox in .NET. So that's the outbox pattern. And honestly, there aren't really very many good reasons not to implement some kind of outbox if you're updating state and you're publishing events. And whether you're wrapping your rights in a transaction or using a database technology like DynamoDB that supports streaming changes, make sure you persist and then publish. Don't try to publish and persist at the same time. Think about that in all scenarios and you will have a more resilient system. Believe me, I've been there. See you in the next one.